Shantae Cruz Staples. Where do you live? I live in Talladega, Alabama. And you're soft spoken, so if you can speak yeah. up. You got a microphone in front of you, okay? Yes, sir. How do you know this man seated next to me in this um, yellow button up jumpsuit? How do you know him? Um, he's my husband and the father of our daughter. How long have you all been married? Um, we're going on 13 years. And how old is your daughter? She is 11. Where is your daughter today? She is at school, at home. What grade is she in? She's in the sixth grade. Does she receive special education services? She does. Why? Um, she has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy as well as, as autism. Is she verbal? She is not. Was she premature? She was. How many weeks? She was um, 23 weeks and four days. Did she spend some time in the NICU? Yes. It was about a pound and a half when she was born? 16 ounces. Casey's been in jail now for a couple of years. Have you maintained contact with him? Yes, sir. How often do you maintain contact with him? He calls often. We have video visits. How often do you have video visits? Um, I try to do it every Sunday um, based on my work schedule. How long are those video visits when you talk to him on um, Sundays? 15 minutes, but her attention span is about three minutes. So, so your daughter will be present on the video visit as well? Absolutely. Now, at the time that this happened in April of 2020, were you and Casey separated? Yes. Was his use of alcohol a predicate to you separating? Absolutely. Were you working at the time? I was. And so that's in 2020. How long have you been separated? Casey and I have been separated several years before that because of his battles. Did you know his younger brother, Cody? Yes. How did Cody die? Self-inflicted wound, gunshot wound. Shot himself? Yes, sir. That was in 2016? Yes, sir. Is Casey close with Cody? Yes. Did something about him change after 2016? Absolutely. What changed? He broke. He detached. He was not the man that I married, the man that we shared a life with, that I shared a life with up until that point. He became delusional. He became, he drank more. He, he was a completely different person. I didn't recognize him again, one of the reasons why I ended up leaving. In fact, it isn't until within the last year and a half or so that you've decided to uh, reconcile your relationship with him. Is that right? That's correct. When he hasn't been able to consume alcohol, which he can yeah. in jail, when he receives medication, when he's under the care of a doctor, is he the person that you married rather than the person who left in 2020? Yes. Uh, did you know Brandon? I did. How long did you know Brandon? Um, several years. Um, Brandon came and lived with us for a while, so I, I knew him for a couple years. When you got married, how long ago did y'all get married? 13 years ago? Yeah. When you all got married, was it a private ceremony or was it public? Private. Did you know Casey to have a best friend? Yes. Who was his best friend? Brandon. How often would he 
talk to Brandon? I, um, as far as regularly, I feel like regularly, based on Casey's, you know, job schedule, um, I would say it would be like on, on a regular basis, but not an everyday basis. Um, frequently, is the best I can say. When you visit with KC on Sundays on the video, what does he talk about first? Himself, his court case, or your daughter? Our daughter. Does he ask about how her services are going in terms yes. of her autism treatment? Yes, services, doctor's appointments, how her school day was, every day, what she had for dinner, what she had for lunch. Anything else you want Judge Stein to know about this man before he makes a decision about what's going to happen to his life this afternoon? I can only imagine how Brandon's family feels. And I know it's a terrible loss. And I know that I strongly believe this was not intentional. I don't know the events of that horrible day, but I do know I've heard several statements as if this is Casey's character and that he's a menace to society, and I honestly don't know that man. I don't know him to be just randomly violent, so do, and I understand the need and the desire to want him to be locked away for the rest of his life. I understand that from the family's point of view. But to base that because they feel that he's a danger to society, I don't believe that part is true. I don't believe that this is, I believe it's an isolated incident. I don't believe that if and when it was your will that he does ever get released, that he's not going to ever harm anyone in this manner ever again. Um, Ms. Cruz, I yes, appreciate sir. the answer of my questions this afternoon. This is Ms. Gardner, she's a prosecutor. She may have some questions for you in court, May, okay? Yes, yes, sir. Um, okay, we put so, how long have you been married to him? I think about 13 years. And how long have you been separated? Um, about five now. Is he married before you? Yes, ma'am. Do you know anything about that relationship? Mm, not specifically. I know that I'm his second wife, and he has a son with his first wife. Never talked to her? No, ma'am. Um, have there ever been any uh, incidents of domestic violence between him and yourself? I guess if you want to say we've argued several times um, because of his demons, his drinking, and yes, we've had heated exchanges. And Have the police ever been called? No. Do you know whether or not there were any domestic violence calls in the first place? No. Has he ever been aggressive toward you? Can you define aggressive? Because I, sometimes well, I come off... Let's start with verbally aggressive. Yes, absolutely, in an argument. Has he ever made threats towards you? No. Has he ever been physically aggressive? No. Uh, have you, well, actually, and, and you said that you were aware that Brandon was a friend of his, but you weren't physically present in Clifton Forge to see no, the interaction no, between uh, Brandon and Mr. Staples, right? No, ma'am. Right. And you've never lived with the two of them? Yes, I have. Okay. But it, not recently? No. Um, like I said, Brandon came to live with us um, a couple years ago. But recently? But recently, no, ma'am. And you were not present on the 26th of April when this incident occurred? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Staples, please state your name for the court. Gail Scott Staples. Where do you live? I live in LaGrange, Georgia. Do you know this family sitting over there? Yes, sir, I do. Do you know Ms. Marshall? 
Yes, sir, I do. How long have you known her? Since the boys played little league ball together. The baseball? Yes. How old was Brandon when you first met her? Probably eight or nine years old. He's been to your home? Yes, many occasions. He spent the night with your son? Yes. That he actually stayed at my house in February of 2020. KC and Brandon both were at my house. My husband was in rehab and I was working and they were both staying there to be there with my daughter. Your husband had been injured in physical rehab, is that right? He was in rehab. He had had emergency back surgery because he went numb from the chest down. So it's fair to say from the age of eight until the year that he passed, you've known Brandon for more than two decades, three decades. Yes, sir, I have. He had stayed with me on other occasions, too. Had you ever known your son and Brandon to fight before, physically fight? I've never seen him become physical before. Where was your son born? Where was he born? He was born in LaGrange, Georgia at West Georgia Medical Center. Where did he grow up? He grew up in Lynette, Alabama. Graduated from high school? Yes, sir. He graduated from Lynette. Well, he graduated from Lafayette High School. Did he earn good grades? Yes, sir. He had good grades. He was active in sports. He was active in football, baseball. Did KC and Brandon go to high school together? Yes, sir. They play on the same sports teams together? Yes, sir. Did, after your son graduated, did he continue to go to college? He started to school and he had married his senior year in high school and he had moved and then he stopped going to school to support his wife who was a student as well, his first wife. In fact, did he receive a scholarship to play football in college? Yes, sir. Where at? Uh, was it Alabama State? Yes, I'm sorry. I, I just went blank. Alabama State. Yes, sir. Right. Now, does he have any other siblings? Yes, he had my youngest son, who has passed away, was his little brother. And he has a younger sister, my daughter, Brandy. And where's Brandy today? Brandy's at home. Brandy is a traumatic brain injury survivor from a horrific accident, and she is also disabled. She was in a car accident in the last couple of years, is that right? Fourteen and a half years ago. And she is now, has a brain disability as a result of that? Yes, sir. She has a traumatic brain injury that she'll never completely recover from. Your son, had he ever been hospitalized for any kind of psychiatric conditions before 2020? No, sir. Had he suffered any head injuries before 2020? Many. He had actually had three concussions in the past six months, and he also, in 2009, fell off of a roof and had a traumatic brain injury in uh, broke his neck. And in 12 months leading up to April of 2020, had he suffered any injuries within 12 months before April of 2020? Yes, sir. He fell, uh, he fell out of a tree. And Lynette, he uh, was walking across, a, I guess you'd say like a lawn, and, didn't, and it was at night, and he didn't know that there was a culvert there, and he actually fell and re-injured his neck and head. And that happened in November, and he sustained a concussion then. Now your daughter-in-law just described a kind of Staples who was a, a loving father and a devoted husband, but that changed about five years ago when they separated. Uh, yes, sir. Can you tell the judge, what was your, I mean, what was your son... What was his demeanor like? What was it? What was his affect like in 2019, 2020? How would you describe him? 
he was broken. He was not dealing well with the separation. He was not dealing well with being away from his daughter. He did not deal well with the death of his brother or the death of my mother, who passed away in 2017, that he was very close to. So where was he living in 2019 and early 2020? He was living at my other home that I own in Lemonette. And what about Brandon? Where was Brandon living in early 2020, in January and February? And Brandon had been living with Elaine, and then Brandon came and stayed at my house in February because he had been staying there in, in February when uh, Ken had to go into rehab and I was working a, working a rotating shift. KC and Brandon both stayed at my house in so LaGrange. Brandon's wife described how Brandon was living up here that whole time and then you just dropped KC off. But in fact, Brandon was living, you said, with you in February? He, he stayed with me in February while uh, Ken was in rehab, but he had been living with Elaine in Alabama. He had came back after his wife had came back down there. He came back and stayed down there. Because he was going through some marital troubles as well? Yes, sir. And so these two men lived together under your roof? Yes, sir. Did they have a conversation about reestablishing a life for themselves up here in Virginia? They had both sat and discussed it. We were in the den and they were talking about coming back up here and getting a new start and Brandon had told KC he could come up here and you know, find him a job, get back you know, doing his carpentry work. He should be able to find a job up here. That's why he brought all of his tools and things with him, he even brought his compressor with him because he was going to try to come up here and find a job here so that he you know, would kind of get a fresh start and get away from the area there and away from everything. All right. So at some point, did you drive KC up here to live with Brandon at the home in Clifton Forge? Yes, I did. I drove him up here. Okay. And how often would you talk to your son while he was living up here? He lived up here for a few weeks before this fight happened. I talked to him and Brandon both daily. Do you recall talking to him on the day of the murder? I talked to him and I talked to Brandon. I talked to both of them. The last time I talked to both of them, KC was in the kitchen cooking. Brandon walked in and he told him he was cooking. He said, I can't remember what he was cooking, but he told him what he was cooking. He said, it'll be ready in a few minutes. Bro, you really need to eat something. And then he handed Brandon the phone and Brandon got on the phone and he said, hey, Ms. G, how are you? How you doing? How's Mr. Ken? How's Brandy? And we talked for just a few minutes then and then I talked back to KC. About sometime in the afternoon or early evening hours? Yes, sir. Did either of them sound intoxicated on the phone when you spoke with them? Probably, because... You knew them both drank pretty heavily, is that right? Yes, sir. Unfortunately, they both drank heavily. Now, do you remember the next time you saw your son in person? Yes, sir, I do. Where were you? I picked him up in Forest Park. Is that Georgia? Yes, sir. It's in Forest Park. It's outside of Atlanta and Georgia. And when was that? That was on the 27th. So the next day? Yes, sir. On the next day. Do you remember seeing your son as he pulled up? I mean, remember what he looked like when he pulled up? Yes, sir. When I pulled up, a lady had called me. She called me and told me that he needed some help, mm -hmm. that he couldn't drive. He was... Uh, he needed someone to come get him. And when I got there, he couldn't even talk to me. He couldn't even speak to me. You ever seen your son like that in his life? No, sir. I've never seen him like that in my life. Did he have blood on him? No, sir. Did he appear intoxicated? No, sir. He just was so d detached, so... I don't know how the words to describe he... He was there, but he wasn't there. Does that kind of explain? Is he disconnected? He was totally disconnected. Like you were talking to a zombie? He didn't respond to me when I talked to him, really. He didn't, he couldn't say anything to me. He couldn't talk to me. He couldn't, he was shaking. 
vis I mean, very physically, visibly shaking all over. By that point, did you know that Brandon had died in the fight? I think I knew right before I got to him, I think I knew. And obviously you saw Brandon's truck, correct? Yes, sir. Did you make a plan that you were going to drive Casey to the police station? Yes, sir, we did. Uh, when we were going to leave the truck there, Casey got a few of his things out of there. He threw some trash away that was just like some empty liquor bottles and that that had probably been in there. I took Brandon's wallet out of the console because that's where Brandon kept it all the time. And KC wasn't even aware that it was in there. But I did not want to leave it in the truck with us leaving the truck there. What police station were you going to take him to? To LaGrange. I, I was going to take him to get something to eat after he ate. We were going to go turn, you know, he was going to go turn himself in. He had already taken his shirt off because he said he wanted them to see that he was not armed or anything. When he had taken his shirt off, did he have any injuries on his body? Yes, sir. He had a big bruise on his rib cage that went from the front to the back that was, I don't know, probably a couple inches wide. Like in the shape of a baseball bat? Yes, sir. And after he was taken into custody over the next several days and weeks and months, would you attempt to speak to your son on the telephone? Yes, sir. I talked to him several times. And what was his demeanor like when you talked to him on the telephone? Still very detached, very, he was, say things that didn't even make sense. Like what? Uh, he would say things that someone had told him something and I knew he was in jail and that he was in isolation and couldn't have talked to anybody. Mm -hmm. And he would say things that just, I knew that they were delusional. Uh, he would and be insistent, get a bond, get me out of here. And I said, you can't get bond, you can't get out. And try to explain to him that under the charges he could, and he could not comprehend what the charges were and why he could not get bonded out and why he had to stay in jail. You've continued to maintain contact with him over the last two years now. Oh, yes, sir. I talked to him multiple times a week. Has he ever talked about Brandon? No, sir, he still can't. He still can't talk about it. He's never told me what happened. Well, we're going to hear from him in a second. Is there anything else you want Judge Stein to know before Judge Stein makes a decision about what's going to happen to your son today? Before he was so broken and before alcohol and everything and grief got him into the state of mind that he was in, he was a good man. He was a good son and a good man. He And he loved Brandon and I love Brandon. And I know he loved Brandon. And I still cannot wrap my head around any possible thing that could have brought us to this point that could have happened between the two of them. I don't have any other questions for you. Ms. Gardner, may go. I'm going to tell you what. Yes, sir. So, Ms. Staples, you uh, took your son to Brandon's house in Clifton Forge in April, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Dro dropped him off along about April 1st? Yes, ma'am, I don't remember the exact date, but now, this incident uh, occurred on April the 26th. You said that you talked to your son that day? Yes, ma'am. You also talked to the state police that day? No, ma'am. State, state police did not contact you and tell you that they were looking for your son? No, ma'am. Not at any point in time did they call you and tell you that they were looking for your son? N I do not believe so until afterwards. I do not believe they did. They called you before you... Before you picked him up. And I'll be honest, they may have. I, I don't remember. That day I was extremely upset and distraught. I really do not remember. Okay, so you don't remember the state police calling you sometime in the evening of the 26th 
and telling you that they were looking for your son. And they may have, but I was... You just don't remember that. I'm, I'm serious. I, I really don't. I don't and, remember and, and because... And telling you that he was a suspect in a murder. They so told me that right. he was wanted for questioning, I believe, at some point. In, in, in relation to somebody, to the death of Brandon Wright. I don't believe they had told me that until I spoke with the state police officer who came down a couple of days after he was arrested. I don't remember his name. But you, you did know that the police were trying to find him. They were, they were soliciting your help to try to find Casey, your son, right? Yes, ma'am. And that was all before you met him uh, right outside of Atlanta in Bars Park. Yes, ma'am. And also, do you remember receiving a call from Penny? I had a missed call from Penny, and I returned the call to Penny, and I, I did not, sp that's when she uh, very briefly was on the phone and was crying. And she was crying because Brandon was dead, and she told you that your son was a suspect in his murder. No, all she said was Brandon was dead, and she was not on the phone anymore after that. She was crying hysterically. And you didn't have any idea that they were looking for your son at that point? Not at that point, no. And that was on the 26th when Penny called, right? 27th. 27th. But before you went and picked him up? Right? Yes, ma'am. That was before I went and picked yeah, him up. At what time did you go pick him up on the 27th? I'm not exactly sure. You left your house about 11.30? I don't believe it was that late. I don't remember. Exact time. Pretty, pretty late on the 27th? I don't think it was, you know, really late. I don't remember exactly what time. When the woman called me is when I went, and I don't remember. So, but you knew at that time that the police were looking for your son? Yes, ma'am, I did. And that's why I had went and got him, and our plan was for him to go turn himself okay, in. I didn't, I didn't ask about your plan. You knew at that time, and uh, your son called you a couple of times between uh, Clifton Forge and when he got to the point where you picked him up, right? He called me earlier in the day, yes. Not on his phone. He called me, uh, I don't know what, whose phone he called on. But it wasn't his phone. He borrowed somebody's phone and called you while he was en route from Clifton Forge to where you got him, right? I. I assume, I, I mean, I don't remember whose phone he called from. Well, it wasn't his, though. I don't know. Right. And uh, a woman called you uh, from the gas station in Atlanta or in Forest Park, is that right? Correct. And did you talk to your son on that phone call? No, ma'am, I did not. All right, so then you drove, you left home, and you drove to pick him up? Yes, ma'am. And that was about 45 minutes or so from your house? Yeah, about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, so you drove that long, you went and picked him up. Uh, and when you got there, you saw Brandon Wright's F-150, his truck at the gas station, right? Yes, yes ma'am, I did. And you watched your son take Brandon's keys and his wallet out of the truck. No, ma'am. And put them in your car. No, ma'am. I took Brandon's keys. I took Brandon's wallet out of the console because Casey didn't even know it was in, didn't think about it was even in there. I took it out because it was, that's where Brandon kept his wallet, was in the console. All right, do you remember talking to Sergeant Jeff Adams and Captain Kelly Ellington of the Troop County Sheriff's Office when this happened? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember telling them that Casey got Brandon's wallet out of the console of the truck and put it in the center console of your car? I told them, I, I thought, I, t I do believe that I told them because I remember I took it out and I took the keys because the keys were laying on the seat in the truck. And you, you didn't tell them that your son also got Brandon's keys, took the keys to the truck? You told them you did it. I did, because I put them in the console of my car, because when they took my car, I told them where the keys were and where his wallet was. And then your son got all the other belongings that were inside the truck and put them in your car? Correct. And this was? His personal items, clothing, shoes. Right. Well. Uh, Brandon's shoes were there, too. Did you see those? I do not. I did so, not know so they were. So at this point, when, you're, when you see Brandon's vehicle there, 
and you're taking his belongings out of the truck, you know that Brandon is suspected of being murdered. Yes, ma'am. So you put your son in your vehicle and you drive around. Is that correct? Correct. For how long? I'm not sure. Till the Troop County Sheriff's Office stopped you, is that right? I, they pulled in behind me when I had stopped. And when they pulled in behind you, your son was in the passenger seat with the seat lying down, right? He was in the passenger seat. And when the deputies came to apprehend him, he resisted them, is that no, right? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. He got out and got on the ground. They didn't have to use a taser? No, ma'am. They did not tase him. They asked so me to get out of the car they, first. They said, I got out of the car the first. That wouldn't be true? They did not tase him because I got out of the car first. They had me get out of the car first and sit down on the ground. Then they asked him to get out of the car and he got out of the car and laid down on the ground because they yelled at him to lay down on the ground. So, so if they said they used a taser, that would be incorrect? I never saw him tase him. And was he drunk when they asked him? Um, we all drink, was he drinking in the car with you? He had had a couple beers in the car with me. You went and bought him some alcohol? No, ma'am. He had the alcohol with him when he got in the car with me. Okay. And you indicated that when you saw him that he was acting like he wasn't there? He wasn't there. He couldn't answer questions. He couldn't talk to me. All he did was cry. Was he perhaps acting like somebody who had just committed murder? All he did was cry. I don't have any other questions. Can you redirect? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the other witnesses in this case, call Mr. Staples. Raise your right hand before you. Do you swear or affirm the evidence you have to give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you die? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Staples, please state your name. My name is uh, Casey or Kenneth Staples. How old are you today? For 43. When did you first meet Brandon? How old were you? We were probably about nine or ten years old playing playing uh, Little League Baseball. Did you all go to school together? We did. He was great ahead of me. And so the first time you met him wasn't because he had a class together. He's, he's a grade older. Yes. You met him on the Little League Baseball team. Correct. How far, how far away did he live from where you lived? Same town? Yeah, we went to the same, the same school district, same, same schools. And through that friendship on the Little League baseball team, did you become friends, spending time at each other's houses over the years? Through high school, through, through high school we did take classes together, so we were, we were friends in high school, and we would hang out and play sports together. Other than your brother Cody, did you have a best friend in life? Brandon was my best friend. Why do you say that? I loved him like a brother. And you killed your best friend, right? I did. I, I didn't intentionally, intentionally do it. And you played guilty to killing your best friend, correct? I, I did. They're your father, those people over there, right? Yes, yes sir. And her son, right? Yes, sir. Remember the day he died? Parts of it. Can you tell the story about how Brandon died so they can hear it? I will. It was, how did he die? It was uh, the 26th of April. It was on a Sunday. Um, it was pretty much a normal day. I mean, we, we were just hanging out in the house, drinking. Um, then he, he wanted to go to this, to the, he wanted to catch the liquor store before it closed. Because it closed, I think, at 8 o'clock. So I got in, in the truck with him, and we left and went to the store. And we came back. All was well. He used to go off on these tangents about, you know, like, about his family problems and stuff. And I had told him there was one subject we couldn't talk about, and that was his wife. Because he would, he would want to down her, and she's, she's a friend of mine also. So you and Penny went to school together, correct? No, we grew up right down the road from each other. We, we went to separate schools, but... We still grew up right down the road from each other. And so I, he, he was insisting I was going to listen to him. 
I told him, no, I'm going to leave and take a walk. And we were standing in the foyer or whatever that room is in the house. And I went to walk for, for the front door, and I said, I'm, I'm going to go take a walk. You know, I'll, I'll be back in, in a few minutes. He said, you're not going anywhere. He steps in front of me. Well, I just spun around, you know, spun around the turn and walked the other way. He punches me in the back of the head. How tall is Brain? As tall as you, you're a tall guy. He's taller than I am. He's about six, probably 6'4". Six, How much does he weigh? Probably 350 pounds. He's bigger than you are? A lot bigger. Right. You guys are both pretty big, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, so you're in this argument. Had you been drinking that day? Yeah, we had both been drinking. A lot? Just like we did every other day. Well, what would you do every other day? How much? How much did I drink? How much did he drink? How much did you drink? Mm -hmm. Now, on that day, he, he drank about 30 of those miniature 100-proof, uh, I think they were bananas or pineapple or something. Mm -hmm. and, and I had drank about almost a fifth of vodka. All right. Were you both pretty intoxicated at this point when you were having this argument? <sighs> I would like to say no, because, I mean, it was... It, 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 it wasn't like we were just a, obliterated drunk, I don't think. But we, I, I, it was getting on in the day, so I'm, I'm sure we weren't, we weren't uh, you know, stone cold sober either. So what happened? So after he hit me, I turn around and he grabs me. And he's, trying to, he's trying to take me to the ground. He's, he's, I mean, he's pissed off. He's mad. He's mad. Mm -hmm. And so we end up wrestling around. And he, he, he leans over and I punch him in the stomach. And when I punched him in the stomach, it must have it must have ruptured his liver. Or, or you intended to punch him in the stomach, correct? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was, I was trying. To... You hit him hard enough to rupture an organ, correct? Yeah, because it, it, immediately after I punched him in the stomach, he was like projectile vomiting blood, not coughing. It up. I mean, it was. I, I never seen anything like it in my in my life. So that would happen. So at that point, I'm freaked out, and, and I'm trying to get him to get. I'm trying to get him to the couch. So we're headed towards the couch. And he, he's he's still, he's fussing and, and, and you know he not really talking because he in between throwing up he's cursing and uh, so he grabs me by my he grabs me by my left testicle and in order at that time I, it was it was all I could do just was just to get him to break the hold that's all I wanted to do just to turn, turn me loose so I elbowed him on top of the head about three or four times right. and it knocked him out he fell back on the ground and the, and then he started snoring. And then he started like sleep apnea breathing. Right. And then he stopped breathing. When he stopped breathing, I, I, I went hysterical. I was screaming, crying, trying to wake him up, praying. It was, I, I don't know, I had some kind of, some kind of breakdown when it happened. Then what'd you do? I laid there with him all night and cried. Why'd you call 911? I don't know. Why don't you call his mama? You know, you knew, how, long, how old were you when you went to his mom? Why would you meet Miss Marshall? Uh, Ten years old, probably. You'd slept over at her house before? Yes, yes, you sir. you cooked the meals before? Yes, sir. That's her boy laying there, and he's dead in the house. Why didn't you call her? I don't know. What were you feeling at that point? I was just, I was hysterical. I remember just screaming and crying. Did you eventually pass out? Yeah, I eventually went to sleep right there. Right there on the floor? Right there. On the first floor of that home? Yes, sir. It's not like you went and tucked yourself into bed upstairs. No. You laid there right next to him all night? Yes, sir. And passed out? Yes, sir. Did you wake up in the morning? Yes, sir. Do you remember what happened after you woke up? <sighs> I woke up and I, I, I left. I, I don't know. I, Why? I, I was, the, the intentional purpose, or the, the, the initial purpose was to go, I was going to drive and tell his family what happened. But then I realized I didn't know where I was at when I left. I didn't, I didn't have any, any idea where I was at. You tried to make your way to your mom? I tried to make my way, yeah, to the south. And you knew, obviously, when you left, he was deceased, correct? I wasn't thinking about anything, I don't think. I, I, I don't remember. Do you remember getting arrested? Vaguely. Do you remember being in jail? Which, which one? Well, the jail in Georgia, down in Virginia. I, I remember a little bit of it, yeah. Remember being taken to a psych hospital? I do. How long were you there? Six months. How often do you 
think about your friend's death? Oh, I, I think about him every day and I miss him. Are you a faithful man? Are you religious? Yes, sir. Do you pray about him? Always. Do you ever have nightmares about this? No. Do you ever have dreams about him? I dream about him. You ever dream about him? Yeah. Judge Stein should do to you this afternoon. I mean, you heard what his family have to say. They want you to be sentenced to the maximum extent under the law. What are you going to do with your life in Brandon's memory if he gives you a chance to live your old age outside of the jail? What First, difference is that going to make? What are you going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to serve God and, and, and enjoy my time with my family. If this judge gives you a chance to be released someday as an old man at the age of 60 or 65 or 70, are you going to live your life for yourself or for Brandon? For Brandon. statement that you want the judge to hear before your sentence today? Would you write that down? I do. You want to read that? I know this is a heartbreaking situation for everybody. I accept responsibility for my actions. I miss my, I miss my friend. I miss my brother every day. I want to apologize to Brendan's family. I want to miss Elaine, Penny, Tyler, Kendall, Danny. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. I'm truly sorry. It's, it's, it's important for, for me that y'all know that I didn't do this on purpose. I only wanted the best for Brendan. I love Brendan. Casey, I don't have any other questions for you. But you know what? They answered my questions, so I want you to answer any questions Ms. Gardner has for you, okay? Okay. So you said that Brandon punched you, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, in the back of the head when I turned around. And you all were near the door when that happened? I was walking towards the front door. Well, that's on the first floor, right? Yeah, yeah. This, this, this thing about us being on the steps never happened. It never did. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, so he punched you in the stomach and in the back of the head. Or in the back of the head, you punched him in the stomach. Yes, ma'am. All right. How many times did you hit him? I just hit him one time, or I must have hit him in the liver, and I guess from from drinking, his liver was inflamed or something. Because, I mean, immediately he's just. Throwing up massive amounts of blood. Okay. Um, and that's that's in front of the door? That's in that whatever room you want to call it, the main entrance, the foyer or whatever. Right. And right in front of the door. Correct. Okay. And so uh, he's... We, well, we had been, been tussling around, so it was in between the foyer and the, the next room. The next room over. Yeah, it was right right in that area. So there. that would be away from the stairs. The next room over would yeah, be yeah. away from the stairs. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so the stairs in that house go up to the landing, correct? Uh, you live there. You know what it feels like, right? Uh, yeah. And the stairs go up to the landing, and then they turn a corner and go on up to the second floor. Is that right? Okay. Okay. Up the stairs and around the corner. So are you telling the court that he was projectile vomiting up the stairs and around the corner? No, ma'am. And did you and your attorney discuss the autopsy report? No, ma'am. So you said you just hit him in the stomach, is that right? I, I hit him on top, on, on top, I elbowed him on top of the head, that's what knocked him out. You elbowed him on top of the head? Yes, ma'am. Okay. He, he grabbed me by did my testicle. Did you use any type of an object to hit him? No, ma'am, my elbow. You didn't use a bat or anything no, else? No, ma'am. Um, Do you have any explanation for the fact that he had 13 different injuries? No, ma'am. And are you 
saying that you hit him on the head with your elbow and killed him? Knocked him out. And afterwards you attempted to clean it up, is that correct? I really don't remember anything after it happened. I remember just screaming and crying. You were there in the house for a few hours with him after it happened, weren't you? Yeah, well, I went to sleep. You I went to sleep? I fell asleep holding him. Well, it looks like you uh, had quite a few cleaning supplies out there trying to clean up uh, the blood. Are you denying that? No, ma'am. I have no idea. How did his blood spatter get to the top of the stairs? I don't know. show you some photographs, Mr. Staples, that the Commonwealth introduced at the last hearing. They are photographs of the inside of the house that were taken by the investigating officers. And your explanation for what happened does not make sense in light of the photographs. So here is a photograph of the front door. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. And you see the stairs? Yes, ma'am. To the right of the front door. So there's a bar of bloody soap. Do you remember using the bar of bloody I don't, soap? No. Here's a picture of blood going up the stairs. Are you saying that that's projectile vomit? We didn't, we didn't, we certainly didn't stop fighting on the floor and go upstairs. Here's a picture of a tuft of hair on the first set of stairs before the landing. You have no explanation for how no, Brandon's hair got on the stairs? No, ma'am. Here's a picture looking down from the top of the stairs to the landing. You recognize that staircase? I do. All right, and after that landing, you have to make a left turn and go all the way down to the first floor where the front door is, correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you see the blood all the way up the stairs? No, ma'am. You don't see the blood on the wall there? All right, well, we'll go back and look at the uh, report. There's a picture of the landing. You see all the blood spatter on the wall? I do. Are you suggesting that that's projectile vomit? I don't know. And the uh, expert, in, the blood spatter expert, uh, described that as spatter, not vomit. You don't have any explanation no, for how that happened. No, no. There's a closer picture of the stairs going down to the first floor. Do you see the blood all over the I wall? Do. Some of that is little droplets. You see that? That's spatter. Is that what you're saying is projectile vomit? I don't know how I got to it. Here are your Converse tennis shoes that have the victim's blood all over them. How did that happen? Here are all the towels that were used to try to soak up the blood. Are you suggesting that you didn't try to clean it up? Yes, ma'am. You're suggesting that? No, no, no. You did uh, try to clean it up or you didn't try to clean it yes, up? Yes, ma'am. I must have tried to clean it up. Okay. And here's the Clorox bottle that you used to try to clean it up. I don't know. 
you are you foggy on some of those things? Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember any of that. Here's Mr. Clean, and here's some more rags. How long did you spend in there trying to clean it up before you left? I don't know. Did you take a shower and clean yourself up as well? I don't remember. And what about the gasoline that was on that was all over the place? Did you did you pour gasoline? I don't remember. Were you planning on setting it on fire, or are you trying to use no, that to clean? So you really don't have any explanation for how that crime scene got to look the way it did. No, ma'am, I don't. Because you had a little altercation in front of the door, and there's no reason that Brandon's blood should be all over two, two flights of stairs. The way I remember it, it that's, that's the way I remember it. And if you recall, I don't know if you were able to look at it, but the Commonwealth introduced the blood spatter uh, examination, the certificate from the blood spatter expert, and he described the blood uh, on the stairs as being impact from an impact. You would disagree with there was any impact at the top of the stairs? You didn't hit Brandon at the top of the stairs? No. No, no ma'am. You didn't have any kind of fight at the top of the stairs? We, never, we, we, weren't, we weren't fighting on the stairs. Okay. And another interesting thing about the blood pattern analysis is that the expert opined that most of the impacts, meaning when Brandon was hit, uh, he was 15 inches to 35 inches from the ground. Do you have an explanation for that? He was bent over when I elbowed him on the head on top of the head. 15 inches from the ground? No, ma'am. And did, did all of this occur pretty quickly, or where it was yes, it over a long period yes, of time? Yes, ma'am. So you wouldn't have had time to make any phone calls or to do anything no, while this was going on, right? No, was it was it fairly sudden? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there a reason then why you had a conversation with Penny Wright over the phone uh, and told her that? He might fall down the stairs and break his neck? There was no such conversation. So you disagree with that? Yes, ma'am. That's what she would testify to that you don't agree with? Yes, ma'am. Uh, and you also didn't tell her that you could take Brandon out in 2.5 seconds, but you didn't have time to clean up all that blood? No, ma'am. You never said that either? No, ma'am. That would have been her testimony. You're aware of that, right? Yes, ma'am. So you really don't have any explanation for the physical evidence that was found at that crime scene, do you? No, ma'am. But Brandon Wright was not living when you left that house. Right? Yes, ma'am. How much did you have to drink after you left the house? I don't know. You stopped in Botetide at the Daleville Kroger and bought, bought yourself some alcohol. Right? I don't remember. You don't remember doing that? We've got some video of you doing that. You don't remember doing it? No, ma'am. Were you driving and drinking? Yes, ma'am. And you take the battery out of your cell phone before you left? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And so then you, you, you set out to go uh, to your mom's house, is that right? Yes, yes ma'am. Again, I'll ask you, you have no explanation for no, the blood all over the house no, and the crime scene? No, ma'am. No, no explanation? No, ma'am. All right. I have no other questions. Can you read around? No, sir. All right. Do you think we're going to see back over here? No, sir. Just argument.